Hey, what's up, everybody? Ali Tarafter back with a brand new video. I'm actually in Miami. Uh, as you can tell, there's the International Airport right there. I'm actually at the Hilton. We got a great view of the city up there. Uh, so here we're discussing some business masterminding and acquiring some companies. Now, one of the most important things I learned is about small businesses and medium-sized companies. They actually make up 90% of the economy, right? So a lot of people get concerned about the idea of, hey, big companies, man, if they shut down, then there's a lot of you know job losses and you know people get so distressed about the idea of a company not setting their headquarters in a certain place or not doing things in a certain way and, and basically you know thinking the value to their cities or economies or localities or municipalities are created by these large conglomerates or big corporations and tactically speaking you know because of the numbers and the financials and the size that they're in you know that may be the case number wise but when it comes to actual impact 90 percent of the u.s economy you know the job creation aspect to let's say uh, the financial inf information in terms of taxes to contributions back to the government is done by these small and medium-sized companies. So a lot of people, you know, mistreat that concept and they think that, hey, listen, I can just get away with, you know, just simply putting money in a big company and they'll come back. But technically speaking, if we look at the financials and, and disclosures, you know, big companies end up paying less taxes over time and they really don't add any value to the economy overall. You know, if they're like 10% of it, but 90% coming from small and medium-sized, you know, enterprises and companies, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of gap uh, that money is not touching. Right? Because a lot of these institutional investors, these family offices and big, big name institutional houses are so focused on the big numbers and investing in the large quantities that they kind of ignore altogether the small and medium sized companies. And of course, there's a lot of reasons for that, right? Because of the highly illiquid market that it is. And illiquidity essentially means the fact that these business owners can't extract the capital back when they invest it because they have to wait a while until that business realizes a certain maturity stage. And for a lot of business owners, that's a, that's a huge risk. And knowing that fact, a lot of small business owners do fail, right, over time as they try to get into maturity, they leverage themselves out, and then they fail. So the, the lesson here I want to teach you guys, and, and the concept I want you to follow me through here is the fact that, you know, even though these small businesses fail, even though there's a lot of different type of things that can happen uh, potentially from these type of transactions, uh, the lesson here is you have to concentrate on creating value altogether. You know, if you, if you don't take the lessons in terms of, you know, as a business owner, you know, what is the approach you're taking towards your financials on a personal level, right? Uh, if you want to build confidence in investors, if you want to build confidence in the market and the economies, the only time we can shift their thinking to make a significant impact enough so that big money pays attention to the small guys is if we ourselves change our financial habits and create a, you know, a level of institutional recognition that gets you know uh, you know their attention and in order to do that we have to really start with ourselves internally and that's why i'm so hardcore focused on personal credit matters that's why i'm so hardcore focused on recreating wealth redefining it and and really going deep into the understanding of what wealth truly is for us what kind of transformation it can provide uh, when you start with personal credit when you learn to tame your personal credit to the way you can direct it to build massive wealth for you and then once you understand that fundamental principle you know, once you go through the phase of, you know, learning as a novice about understanding credit and getting into the game of really learning to, to hone that attitude and, and building more perseverance in terms of building that credit the right way to build your wealth and so you can prosper, that's the only time you'll come to realize that there's a lot of things that can be done, a lot of wealth that can be unlocked, especially if you focus on your cornerstone, which is your wealth, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I want you guys to really focus on this channel on, on what I'm trying to do for you guys. And, and the ultimate goal for a lot of individuals who will turn to be entrepreneurs, uh, you know, and there's a huge shortage of, of succession planning for these, you know, for these uh, baby boomers who are coming into retirement who are just fed up of running their business and they just want to hand it off to, you know, trustworthy individuals. And, and the only way that they can do that is, you know, those baby boomers didn't have the chance of the credit repair stuff that, you know, we do nowadays. They didn't have the opportunity to go ahead and, and do all these type of arbitrage and tactics and techniques and engineer their file. They had to do it the hard way. They had to learn, right? And they have to really take care of their personal credit to go where they are today. So their high success is because of their attitudes and habits, and they've done a great job. But now there's a very small amount of people that are actually qualified enough to take over their businesses or take over the wealth and transition it successfully to give them peace of mind to take other companies that they've built for a long time over the decades. You know, we just don't have that qualification. A lot of those people, 
are just in it for the, like I said, instant gratification. And that can hurt you instead of doing good for you, right? So I want you to guys think about that. Uh, there's a reason why I put the Ultimate Personal Credit Mastery course together. It's because it teaches you every single fundamental principles you need to get yourself in a position of success, starting with the mindset, the evolution of rethinking, uh, understanding and rebuilding wealth a structured way, and then ultimately starting with your personal credit and leading on to better and greater things, right? Which ultimately leads us to why I included a Facebook mastermind group for those people who are you know, students in my course. We don't just talk about personal credit. We can go beyond into business concepts, but in order for me to go ahead and trust anybody about business, I need to know that they're well with their personal credit and they can take the initiative themselves to get to that stage in their life, right? So there's a huge gap, right? So end goal is there's a huge gap and there's a lot of you know spaces that need to be filled. And I'm encouraging individuals to go out there and do what is necessary for them to take, you know, grab a hold of that wealth that's out there and take part in that wealth transition because if you don't then you'll be one of those people that are just going to regret it down the road and i don't want you to be one of those people so with that said and done guys i'll be interrupter your guide and mentor i'll see you guys next time coming to you from miami once again and uh probably be back in montreal in a few days so we'll catch you guys later bye for now